Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's video will be a quick walkthrough on how you can set multiple stop loss and take profit targets in the same order within Thinkorswim. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. Currently I'm under the trade tab and you can see I have Nvidia pulled up. Now there is more than one way to place a trade, so I'll show you all a couple different examples on how this can be completed. But to start, I do want to explain that this can actually be applicable to buying whole shares or if you just wanted to stick to buying option contracts, it'd be relevant to either way. So real quick, let me show you how this would work if you were to buy whole shares. Essentially, all you would do is go ahead and click on the ask price and you'll see the order entry tools pop up here at the bottom. You'll see it has the spread defaulted for stock. Now this again is going to be only relevant if you're looking to buy whole shares. So I'm going to go ahead and click on delete. Now let's say for example you're looking to do just stock options. You can have those contracts and premiums that you're looking to purchase. Let's say for example we're going to go ahead and look at the call side and we're looking at a 141 strike right here. You can choose the ask or the bid. For this example I'll just click on the ask and then you'll see the order entry tools pop up again but this time it has a spread set for single. And we can also see the side is for buy. We then go on to see, of course, for the weeklies, has it as a call, and then you can see the a price for the premium, and then, of course, the order is set for the limit. And we also see that the tip is set for a day, and we'll talk about this more in just a second. Now, for example purposes, I'm going to go ahead and set the number of contracts to 10. Um, that way, I can show you guys a breakdown of what this would look like if you're buying multiple contracts at one time. Now, in order to make sure that we're setting this for trade for a stop loss and a take profit target, we will need to change this advanced order default from single order. We're going to hit this drop down and we're going to go ahead and select first trigger OCO. Now, once we do that, we can go ahead and click anywhere you see here on the green line. You're going to right click and you're going to go ahead and create the opposite order. And what this does is it allows us to have the take profit target set initially. So we're now going to go ahead and click on this red line again. You're going to right click and you're going to go also to create duplicate order. So essentially what we've done is we've had our take profit target here will be this top line of red, the bottom line of red will be our stop loss. So now we can go ahead and adjust the parameters for pricing. So currently at the 141 strike, we see that this particular contract is going for 1.26 and that's also known as $126. But let's say you don't want to actually pay that specific amount for this contract and you want to pay maybe 122 or 123, whatever it is, you can go ahead and set this to be what you would want. So in this case, we're going to just put it at 124. And then now let's say you want your take profit target to be at $134. So you're going to go ahead and put in 1.34. And then of course the opposite can also be true. Let's say you want to be stopped out of the trade. If it doesn't go in your favor and it actually goes against you, you can have this set to be, let's say 1.14. Now what's important to note about this is that you want to change this order limit for the stop loss, take it off a limit and go ahead and put it on either stop, stop limit, trail stop, or trail stop limit. For example purposes, again, we'll just choose stop. Now from here, you definitely want to keep in mind the specific stock or ETF that you're trading because not all trades that we place and customize are placed and executed within the same day. So what that means is you may not have this order fulfilled if you select the parameters that don't get actually fulfilled within the market. So with that being said, I would recommend taking it off a day and choosing GTC because this will allow this particular trade to go through and it's good to cancel. So essentially what I'm saying by that is that if these parameters were not to be met, eventually they will with this GTC order being placed and set. Now once you're comfortable with everything you see and all the numbers look good, go ahead and click on confirm and send. And then you have to go ahead and approve everything on the confirmation pop-up. So that's just the first way to go about doing this. But I also want to make an adjustment real quick because I know everyone doesn't always trade a specific dollar amount. Some people trade percentages and that's completely fine to do. You can still make sure that this order goes through. Essentially what you'll need to do is go under link here where you see it's set for defaulted to manual. Go ahead and click on this and then select trigger for both of these. And now you see the plus or minus which is going to be a dollar value. We're going to go ahead and click on this until you see a percentage sign again for both the take profit and the stop loss. Now again, keeping it very simplistic, for example purposes, let's say you want your take profit target to be at 10%, you can simply click that in there and it'll have a 10% take profit target set for that limit. And then let's say you also want to have it set for a stop loss to be at 10% as well, you're going to go ahead and write minus 10 for this and you'll see it's set for the minus 10%. So once NVIDIA reaches the 10% change and shift, you'll go ahead and be exited out of the trade and you can take profit. And again, if it goes against you and it goes down by that 10%, you'll be exited out of the trade. So it's an either or scenario. Both of these will not get fulfilled. It'll be one canceling the other. So whatever target is met first. 
So to put this plainly, essentially what you've done is you've made sure that the price is at a 1.24, so you're paying $124 for the premium. So again, there's no guarantee that this will be picked up because it's set for a limit order, but if you change it to market, it can be, but that's a whole other thing. But we'll say for example purposes that it would be. So in this case, once NVIDIA reaches a 10% change and an increase, in this case going up, then you'll go ahead and take profits. If it were to go against you and be a decline, it would be at a 10% stop and it'll be done. You'll be exited out of the trade. Now from here, once again, all you have to do is click on confirm and send and acknowledge the confirmation pop up once you see it on your screen. Now, if you're brand new to trading, you may not know this, but you can actually change this particular parameter set that you've actually created by clicking on this little save icon right here. And you can go ahead and type in what you want as far as the title or the name of this. So that way you can always go back to it. So in this case, we're going to have it as one OCO, and then we're going to have 10% slash 10%. And of course, you can also put the number of shares or contracts. In this case, it'll be the number of contracts. So we'll have it set for 10 and we will just write that out. And then we're going to go ahead and click on save. Now within saving that, you want to keep in mind, that's going to be defaulted for one of the options you'll have whenever you click the drop down because it'll be set for under the buy custom. And I'll show y'all what this looks like. Because this doesn't just apply to NVIDIA, it can be for any stock ETF or if you're trading futures, whatever it may be. So I'm going to go ahead and click delete. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to type in Google, for example. And let's say, for example, you wanted to go ahead and place an option trade on Google. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the $200 strike. I'm going to go ahead and right click it. And you're going to see where it says buy custom and you can go over to where it says one OCO 10% slash 10%. And this is of course going to be for the 10 contracts we just created. Go ahead and click on it. And once you do, you'll see it pop up for this order confirmation as well. Now, the good thing about this is that it's defaulted to the exact parameters that you already set. So what this does is it allows for faster execution of your trades so that you don't have to worry about going through and changing every single line and every single detail. It's already set for what you defaulted to before and it really just makes it that much faster to jump in and out of trades. Now, obviously, one of the things you always want to make sure you go ahead and take a look at is going to be the price that you see here in green. You want to adjust this for whatever it is, for whatever new stock or ETF you've pulled up. So in this case, for Google, you may not want to have it at the ask price at a 0.21. You can definitely customize it and change it to what you feel is best. But let's go ahead and go back to NVIDIA so I can show you all how to also add in, of course, other OCO orders. So I'm going to go ahead and hit delete on this and I'm going to start fresh by pulling it back up right here for, of course, that custom order and select the one OCO. Now, with that being said, we do have it set for the advanced order to be at the first trigger OCO. You can select the drop down and go to first trigger two OCO. So this allows two triggers to be set for this one particular order. Now, because we've already done most of the work, again, all you would have to do is simply just duplicate. So for example, we see here, we have it set for the take profit target. I'm going to go ahead and right click on it. And we're going to go ahead and create duplicate order. We're going to do the same thing for the stock, right click, create duplicate order. Now it won't make sense to leave everything set for this default. So we're going to go ahead and change the numbers. So for example, we'll start with the contracts. We can't have 10 for this. So we'll have it as a five for each one so that it actually makes sense when we're actually placing the order. So we'll change all of these to five. And now we'll go ahead and adjust the percentage pricing so that it makes sense. We're not keeping the duplicate number over and over. So we're going to adjust this as well. So let's say for this trigger, we want it to be actually set for 15% for take profit. And we may just want to have it set for the stop to be at, let's say, 5%. And then once again, everything for time and force is going to stay at GTC, which makes it set for good till cancel. And from here, all you have to do is go ahead and click on confirm and send. But I also recommend if you know you're going to do this more than one time, go ahead and save this set. And since this is a custom order template, you can, of course, rename it as I mentioned. So I'm going to go ahead and take this default out and we're going to go ahead and name it essentially what we have for everything. So we'll go ahead and type in two OCO 10 percent slash 10 percent. And then, of course, we'll also have it for the 15 percent slash 5 percent. And you can, again, if you want to put the number of contracts or shares, totally can put that in there as well. 10 contracts. Go ahead and click on save. Now from here, the same rules actually apply. If you wanted to have it set for three triggers, you would just go ahead and click on this advanced order. 
go down to first trigger three OCO. And I'm pretty sure y'all understand the structure of how this works. So you would just click on first trigger three OCO. And then of course, add more, you can duplicate it. And then of course, set the uh, specifics that you want for the order. And then one thing to keep in mind is that you don't have to set this specifically for percentage for each one of these. You can go ahead and have it set for again, a dollar amount if you like. So you just would have to click on it and it'll change the plus or minus and you can have it set for a dollar amount. So in this case, it'd be like $10 under whatever. You can set it for that. So overall, this is all you need to do to make sure that you have everything set so that you can have multiple, obviously take profit targets, multiple stop losses for the same order. So at this point, you're all good to go. But I do want to show you guys another method, another way to do this because there's multiple ways to place trades. So I'm going to go ahead and click on delete. Okay, so again, we're still underneath the trade tab here, but I know some people like to use the active trader tab. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. And I'm going to show you how to do the same thing, but for this screen, for this particular way of placing the option order. Now here on the right side of the screen, this is how you would go about placing trades. So let me walk you through how you would do this for OCO orders. So the first thing you'll see is that the template is set for single. Go ahead and hit the drop down and you can see that it will go down to the trigger with bracket. It's phrased a little bit differently, still does the exact same thing. So if you wanted to set it for a trigger with two brackets, go ahead and click on it. So you'll see this is the top set OCO and this is the bottom set OCO. And you can also have it set for three brackets if you want. You just click on trigger with three brackets, your choice on that. I'll go back to two just to keep it simplistic. Now I automatically have the quantity of contracts set to 10 and you can see it automatically breaks it up. So I don't have to alter this if I don't want to. But let's say, for example, I wanted 11 contracts. You can see that it now changes it from five to six. So it breaks it up to be five and six as even as possible, essentially. Or if I were to have 12, you can see it goes six to six. Again, 13, 14. You guys see the pattern, right? So it does it by default, but you can change it. Let's say you want your first OCO order to be at six and the second one at seven. You just simply click on it and change it. Um, and that's just, again, preference on what you want and what you know you're doing. But it'll automatically default it back to what it is. Now within this, you also see that they have the triggers and it's set for a plus or minus. Again, you can change this and customize it to be the offset. Let me change this right here to five because it's not defaulting it. It's supposed to just default it, but I had it highlighted in the box. That's why. Um, but yeah, you can see the plus or minuses. Again, you can also change this to be a percentage. If you click on it, you can have it for a percent as far as um, moving up or down within the contracts that you have. And it'll make perfect sense for what you're doing. And you can also keep this as a dollar value if you wanted to, or you can also have it set for percent for either order. I will say double check to make sure the order type is right for limit and stop. And then you'll see it also has the time in force as day. I would make sure you have it set for good to cancel because there's no guarantee that this will be fulfilled within the same trading day. Now at the moment, they have it defaulted for it to be at 1%, but let's say you want to change it to 15% for this. And then let's say you want it at 5% for your stop loss. You can set that there. It's totally customizable on what you want to do. And then you can go to the bottom half of the bracket and do the same thing for the trigger here. Let's say you want it at 12% and then you want this to be at maybe 10. Go ahead and have that there. And then from here, you can actually save this customized template as well. Go ahead and click on this save icon and then put the name that you want for it. Um, essentially go about doing that and then you'll just click save. And once you do, you'll go ahead and see it pop up here underneath the single OCO, underneath the defaults that they have for Thinkorswim, you'll see it listed under here. Now I have a bunch of these already pre-populated because obviously I help people trade and learn how to, you know, place these types of trades. So you'll see a bunch of them defaulted that I have, but you can change and adjust it and modify it for what you want. So yeah, y'all, that'll pretty much do it for this video. So I hope everyone has understanding on how you can have this one single order be placed to have multiple different triggers set. Again, for your stop loss and your take profit target. So if you found this video to be helpful, feel free to leave me a comment down below. As always, I thank y'all so, so much for watching and I'll see y'all in my next one.